Okay, well maybe just get started then. Um, so my name is Barry Stephen, I'm a physiotherapist working up in Aberdeen. I'm currently working as the pulmonary rehab lead um, up in Aberdeen City. Um, I also sit on the Scottish Pulmonary Rehab Action Group um, Committee. Uh, so I'm going to be giving you just some feedback about um, what we've been looking at nationally um, over the past year. Um, so I'm sure you've all been involved in pulmonary rehab in some way, whether that be uh, referring people to the service or whether you're involved directly um, in giving, giving the programme. Um, so I'm just going to give you a very, very brief overview of, of what it is. So pulmonary rehab is just looking at a programme of exercise and education um, for people with chronic uh, respiratory disease. Um, looking at, at combating a lot of what their, their complaints are, so looking at improving their exercise capacity, um, their breathlessness and the psychological um, aspect of it as well. It is primarily offered to people with COPD, um, but more, more and more evidence is becoming available for other chronic respiratory diseases as well um, over the past few years. Um, traditionally, it was kind of found to be most effective for people with an MRC score um, greater than or equal to three. Um, but again, over the past few years, there's more evidence um, for people with an MRC score of two as well. So I think most places are kind of um, taking patients with, with that MRC score as well. <coughs> as I say, there's kind of a growing evidence for pulmonary rehab over the past certainly sort of five to, to ten years. And these are just some, some quotes that we've had um, fed back from some patients that have participated in the programme. Um, so as well as the evidence base um, there as well, we're getting the kind of patient satisfaction from people that, that come through the programme um, as well. Looking at um, one of the quality chats that I know has been um, shown previously, um, we're seeing that pulmonary rehab can be a very cost-effective treatment for patients with um, respiratory conditions. Um, so as Noel was kind of saying earlier, your kind of flu vaccines, your stop smoking, um, are obviously looking at it being the most cost effective um, but only just above them is, is pulmonary rehabilitation uh, looking at being more cost effective than, than a lot of the inhalers and things that are, are prescribed which I, I imagine are often the, kinda, the go to um, on <coughs> diagnosis of people with, with COPD um, so it's something that we're looking at trying to promote um, health professionals and things looking at referring into pulmonary rehab early on in a patient's journey of their respiratory condition as well So coming around from the um, Scottish Pulmonary Rehab Action Group that I said I'm a, a member of and in conjunction with Chest, Heart and Stroke Scotland, we looked at doing a, a national survey um, of the services um, across the country and we realised there was just a, a lack of knowledge of, of what was available in the, the different health boards as well. So kind of across the end of, end of last year, <coughs> um, we looked at collecting data from all the, the different services um, and combining just to see, see what, was, what was available out there and what was, what was needed to improve um, the service. Um, this is just a summary of kind of the, the main points that were found from the survey and I'll go into these in a, in a wee bit more detail. Um, like I said, this was kind of the first thing that had been done nationally, looking at, at what was available in the different health boards. So we didn't really know when we started the survey what was, what was going to kind of come, come out of it. Um, so this is just kind of our, our starting line. Uh, so looking first of all at the under provision, uh, this was something that came out. So generally most health boards offer um, pulmonary rehabilitation in some form, um, but unfortunately there's no pulmonary rehabilitation service offered in NHS borders um, at the moment. Um, we found there was an unmet, an unmet need across the country, um, quite, quite high levels of, of unmet need, unfortunately. Um, finding that the capacity of um, PR programmes across the country falls way short of uh, the kind of potential need that's available for people who, who would benefit from the service. Um, so obviously you can see they're quite high across the board. Um, borders obviously looking at 100% with, with no PR programme in place. Um, but even those areas that do have, have quite a good PR programme, still quite a high level of unmet need um, with the service. Uh, looking at, at all the programmes and, and what was included in them, we found um, quite a variety in, in how they were being offered. Um, so our varying programme lengths from 6 to 12 weeks. Um, some places were, were offering their classes once a week, other places twice a week. 
Um, depending on location, um, often places that were, were maybe more rural were finding they had to run maybe a block programme, um, just in terms of staffing and having staff available in that area. Um, other places running a, a rolling programme with that. And the wait times varying, varying massively across, across the country, ranging from two weeks to 26 weeks um, in some areas. Um, referral rates, uh, looking at, at the number of, of people that we feel would benefit from pulmonary rehab, um, these were kind of the percentage of those people that were actually being referred into the programme. Um, so you can see uh, across the um, areas, uh, low percentages of people being, being referred into the programme um, who would benefit with the highest just being at, at 14%. Um, there. When we're getting people um, referred into the programme and getting them started, um, it's then another challenge getting them to try and complete the programme. Um, so these were the completion rates um, across the country um, from people starting in the pulmonary rehab programme. So varying, varying greatly from the kind of 17% in Ayrshire and Arran up to the highest being 59% in Highland. Um, so we're looking at an average of 49% of people completing the programme once they start in, the, in pulmonary rehabilitation. Um, something we, we took into account when we were doing this was that different health boards often take a different, a different thing as being completion. Um, so that's something that we, we're maybe looking at trying to uh, level out across the board. Some places might say it takes 10 attendances to complete your programme. Others, it might just be when you achieve your goal. So that's something that, that does vary greatly as well um, and is taken into account in the completion rates. Overall, we were finding um, that we were meeting some quality standards with regards to pulmonary rehab programmes, um, but that, that some quality standards were not being met. Um, so things that we found that were positive about um, the services across the country, it was being offered um, to people with COPD, which, as I say, is, is traditionally where it's found to be of, of most benefit. Um, with the growing evidence base, um, all health boards were offering it for people with other respiratory conditions as well. Um, such as your ILD or your bronchiectasis as well. The programme dur duration was um, meeting the quality standards um, across the board and what was included in the programme and, and how the uh, benefits on the, of the programme were measured were, were all seen to be good across the country. Places where we found that needed a bit of work in some health boards, um, only 50% of areas were offering a post-exacerbation um, programme. There's a lot of evidence around um, getting people into PR early after exacerbation, um, but as I say, only 50% um, offering that. And with some places with waiting lists up to 26 weeks, um, you can imagine that that's not meeting them post-exacerbation. Some areas had multidisciplinary team input, um, but in, in some places there was no MDT input at all or it was limited in some areas um, as well. Um, only 50% of areas were providing written plans to their patients upon completion. Um, so as we know, kind of pulmonary rehab is looking a lot at the kind of self-management of patients, giving them that toolkit um, to try and help improve their, their self-management. But a lot of places were, were just having them complete the programme and not necessarily giving them the tools to continue. And um, we felt following this survey that it's something we probably need to repeat and look at, or, um, look at auditing some of these things annually um, and trying to get some equality across the, the health boards in the country as well. Um, the key recommendations that have come out of doing the survey, um, as we're saying, it's pulmonary rehab has been found to be a, a cost effective treatment in patients with respiratory condition. But with some areas like the NHS borders, they have no funding at all for, for programmes. So it's something that we feel that you know, investment needs to be made in, in having this service available to the patients at the right time um, and in, in the right places in order to ultimately um, be cost effective. Uh, looking at uh, raising the awareness um, of both health professionals and patients as to what pulmonary re rehab is and seeing if that can help um, improve particip participation levels as well. Looking at reducing the barriers and support and transition of those patients maybe um, coming out of hospital or, or patients who haven't been involved in anything like this before. Um, there's a sort of a variety of barriers to people taking part in the pulmonary rehab programmes um, and that's something that we're going to have to look at, at trying to combat, combat those and get people involved. Um, and as I said, going on, looking at... Um, 
trying to make things equal across the country and uh, maybe having a kind of national um, data set to, to look at where the developments are, are needed across the areas. With pulmonary rehab, um, I think it's something that is, is really important for everybody that, who can benefit from it to be given the opportunity to take part in it. Um, the provision of PR services supports delivery of a number of the key strategic drivers that we're looking at in kind of health and social care. Um, like I already mentioned, it, it's really looking at working on self-management and um, giving the patients the tools to, to manage their condition more effectively. Um, it's taken a very kind of patient-centred, holistic approach um, to, all their, to all their treatment um, as well. So I think it, it's something that does need to be, be offered to everyone who can benefit from the programme. These are just some developments that are going on across the country at the moment. Um, as I said, there is more and more evidence coming through for people with other chronic respiratory conditions other than COPD. Um, some areas are looking at uh, running programmes specific to different conditions. Um, so looking at, some areas are looking into an ILD specific group, others into an asthma specific group, which can really help with the kind of education um, component of the pulmonary rehab itself. Um, looking at branching out slightly into the pulmonary hypertension areas and how we can we can use pulmonary rehab to support those patients as well. Um, something that's becoming a lot more pertinent across the um, country in, in loads of different conditions. Um, some areas are looking at how we can bring anticipated care planning into the pulmonary rehab programme and raise awareness of it um, there for, for some of the patients that are involved. So we're just going to look to move on to some discussions and um, just in your in your groups that you're in. Um, so as I've said, kind of these are the, the main things that have come out of the survey where where problems with um, pulmonary rehab are, are coming about. Um, so these are just a few questions that I'd like you to have, have a wee think about. Um, so just if there's any kind of ideas you've got on how awareness can be raised in both kind of patients and health professionals on the benefits of pulmonary rehab that will hopefully um, get more people referring to the programme and um, patients themselves realising the benefit and, and wanting to come along and, and complete the programme. Um, as I said, quite low referral rates across the country. Um, so looking at what are the, the barriers to referral um, and if there's anything that, that can be done to try and help improve the referrals to the PR services. Um, and finally, what would prevent people from, from completing the programme? So we know there are quite a, quite a few barriers um, to what people are... Uh, managing to, to complete the programmes and if you think there's anything that we can do to try and support these patients through the programme so that they can get the real benefit from it. Okay, so I'll just give you some time in your, in your groups to discuss these points and then we'll look in um, feedback from there. Thank you.